Well, we're coming up now for the obedience uh, demonstration. Uh, we'll be seeing the judge coming into the ring first. This is the person responsible for uh, the, the person responsible for the two courses that the dogs and bitches have had to take part in over the two days previously, uh, yesterday and today, in fact. The ring steward will be coming in as well, and uh, the scribe, I'll point them out as we go. But uh, they're going to come in, and the two winners are going to come into the ring as well, and they're going to perform some of the routines they had to do. Not all of them, because heel work alone takes five minutes. They're going to give little segments of the work that they do. Uh, each of them will do some. Two of them, they'll do two of the events together. And uh, I think you'll have a very enjoyable time. If you don't know what obedience is, I'll try to fill you in exactly on the details. It's much more interesting than you might think from its name. Dave Ray down there in the ring explains to the audience what uh, it's like. He knows all about it. Married to Mary Ray, who's won the competition here on uh, several occasions. And so here they come. The judge is Stella Hentridge. So Susie Tooley with Everush Olympic Flame coming into the ring. Now the two of them going to perform here. On the left is Dot Watts with Obedience Champion Rushkas Magical Image. It's known as Magic. Dot has won this competition. This is her sixth victory for the dogs. The bitch, Susie Tooley there with Everush Olympic Flame. Lame. They come from Steffingley in Bedfordshire. They've won the bitch competition today. Now, the judge is standing immediately behind them. That's Stella Hentridge. And with her is the ring steward, uh, is the scribe, I should say, Debbie Giddens. She takes note of what's happening. To the left there, you'll see the ring steward, Jackie Roddick. And she is giving the instructions on where they should move. They're giving a demonstration of heel work. She will give them some of the instructions that they have. In heel work, they have to walk at slow, medium, and fast pace. They have to do turns to the left, turns to the right. They have to be able to leave their dogs in set positions, the sit, the down the stand. All of those things have to be performed. It takes five minutes normally. We're only going to see about a minute of it now. As you see, both of them on instruction from the steward. It's always from the steward's instruction, leaving their dogs in the sit position. And the dog has to stay there until they come past. They'll come past in the other direction and pick the dogs up. It can be done by gesture or words, the instructions. The next is probably going to be the stand. It may be the down. We'll see. But now you see they've slowed the pace. They've gone to a slower pace turning slowly, say left and right turns, total about turns they have to do, and the dog must walk and keep that station with the handler the whole time. They watch very, very carefully, they mustn't lean on, there must be no pressure that way, so the dog needs to be perfectly stable itself whilst it pays total attention to what the handler is asking them to do. And these two are working like clockwork, aren't they? They've speeded up again, they're walking at the uh, I think we'd call that normal. Now, you see, that was some of the hand gesture. And there'd be a point lost there by Dot in that point because the dog didn't stop exactly. Although the hand came down there, it didn't stop quite immediately. Little half point gone. But uh, in the competition, obviously, they've been, <laughs> you know, they've been relaxing, having already taken part in the competition. Any errors in this ring are more than understandable, and there won't be many of them. So this is heel work. Final position, the down. And again, the same thing happens. Handlers come and walk straight past them. The dog must hold its position. There are a lot of exercises that they have to take part in during the course of the competition, and they've got to get the fewest faults possible to win. If they get more than, I, I can't remember the figure, I think it's 15, 15 faults in total, they don't get awarded the championship. So both of these have had a very effective and very successful competition today and yesterday. Dot yesterday, Susie today. 
Susie on the far side, just a reminder, Dot Watts on the near side. Dot's sixth win this year. I know her well from years, uh, going back and interviewing her many, many years ago, long before uh, I was presenting Crufts wholeheartedly. I was just involved with the obedience. So here we go. That's the end of, that's the demonstration of heel work, and pretty effective it was too. Well done. Now we're going to see the send away. One dog is going to do this. I don't know who's going to do it. I think it's going to be Susie. Yes, she's staying in the center of the ring. So Susie Tooley and Olympic Flame. I guess the name is Flame. I don't know actually its pet name. I think it's Flame. Ah, no, no. The send away is going to be done by obedience champion Zygdan Zyko. Zyko is her dog this year. And so we've taken the wrong, uh, I gave you the wrong name earlier and I apologize for that, but it is Dot Watts, take my word for it. This is the send away. The dog is sent away and told to, oh, that's excellent. Right as far as it can go and down and must stay there. Dot will now come and collect it, but the dog mustn't move until she calls it. She'll walk towards the dog. She'll then turn one way, left or right. I'm not sure which way she's going to go and then call the dog and the dog must wait until it was called. You didn't actually see Dot uh, make the call, but the dog responded perfectly and came away. I wouldn't get any faults for that, but they're not finished until they stop and the steward will say exercise over. They stop with the dog comfortably by their side. Well done, Dot. Perfect. Is it straight? They can lose points at that point. Exercise over. Well done, Dot. That's the send away. Next exercise we're going to see will be Susie with the retrieve. Now Susie's going to do a retrieve. The retrieve is very simple. The judge chooses the object. It is thrown for the dog and the dog is sent to collect it and must bring it back, present it properly, and then end up in the correct position. Looks like a soft toy this time. Can be anything at all. It's absolutely in the judge's... The judge will decide totally what it's going to be. That's a bit of a close uh, present, I would say, but that's at the end of a long, long day. Would have presented perhaps a little bit less close earlier, but that was excellent. That's the exercise. Well done, Susie. That's the retrieve. And now one of the most fascinating uh, exercises, distant control. And I guess that's going to be done by Dot. Or is it going to be done by Susie? We'll see. It's going to be done by Susie. Now, distant control is interesting. The dog... They're leaving the dog in a standing position in the course where they've been walking. As Dave Ray is saying, there'll be a mark on the ground and the dog must stand behind it. And from a distance, we'll get six instructions for three different positions that the dog will take. The first one, sit, and the dog has done that, and down. This again can be voice or gesture or both. You can hear it. There, Susie calling out. And the sit. One more position to come, and the stand. And now she'll go and collect the dog. The dog must stay there, holding the position until she gets there. When she arrives, she can bring the dog round onto her left. Or in fact, just nicely there. Exercise over. There you go. Distant control. And now for the one that gets most people going. This is the scent discrimination exercise. I should add that there are two other exercises which we're not going to do here because they have a two-minute sit with the owners out of the ring and the dog mustn't move. And then we have a two-minute, a five-minute down when the owners go out of the ring. But we're not going to see that because it's boring when you've got just two dogs doing it in the ring. We don't want to see that. But that they've done that perfectly well. We're now coming to the scent discrimination. In simple terms, it's quite complicated to explain, but in simple terms, those are sterile cloths which are going to be placed in a pattern. There we are. And the pattern that they're put in, carefully measured out, there they go. And these are sterile cloths. At the same time, there are two other cloths which are given to the judge. The judge gets his scent on that cloth. One of the cloths is put in the pattern and one of the cloths will be given to the handler. The dog must then go and find the cloth that is the judge's scent. And at the same time, there are two decoy cloths put in there 
which have a totally different scent, which they mustn't pick up. They've got to get the correct scent. This looks like a straight line pattern. It isn't always. It could be a, a cruciform or it could be a triangle. It can be any pattern. It's entirely up to the judge. Whether it's more difficult in some ways or another, I'm not quite sure because the dog is supposed to go and sniff at all of the cloths and pick the right one. It's very elaborate. Now, this is scent discrimination. It's often the one that uh, many a dog that has been leading in the competition will suddenly go out with a horrible crash because they haven't got the right one. Scent discrimination is the one that sometimes catches them out. It won't catch these two out. As D Dave Ray is now explaining to the audience here, we now want the decoy cloths. And of course, you can see that Susie's looking, but the dog isn't and mustn't. The dog is kept out of the way, does not look to see what's going on. Dot's not having to do this today. So the decoy cloths, you see, getting the scent from somebody else. There we are, someone sitting on the front bench there, just handling the cloth, and that will go into the pattern. Mean, isn't it? I mean, really, so unfair. Decoys and all that nonsense. My word, how dare they? Oh, are they both going to do it? From op not opposite ends at the same time. Don't be silly. That would be very chaotic. It can't be rushed at all, as Dave Ray is explaining. It's, uh, it's quite straightforward. This has to be precise. There's another scent going on a cloth. That's the second decoy. So, what you've got is a pattern of sterile cloths, two decoy cloths, and one cloth with the judge's scent on it. So all this time, the judge, now she's saying where the decoys are going to go. There's the decoys. Now, that's the one. Oh, they're not using the judge's cloth. They're using the chairman of Crufts. <laughs> they're just doing this to confuse me. It would be the judge's cloth in competition, but it's actually the specific one with the scent. That's the one. It's actually got the scent uh, from the handling of the cloth by the chairman of the Crufts committee. It's really quite simple. I hope I've explained it simply for you as well. Luckily, they took their time in setting it up, so I could explain it by the Now, I think it's the fifth cloth down. Sensible dog, checked them all. Now, go and find the right one. Whoops. Oh, it's the fourth one now. Is that the right one? It must have been. I thought it was the fifth one. What a great result. It was the right one. Jolly good. Thank goodness for that. That would have been a very sad moment were it not to be. So Susie's done that, and now Dot's going to do it as well. She's going to do it from the other end, and they're giving her the cloth, and this one will now go back. One more will go back into the pattern. It'll be in the same place, I hope. Zyko having a really good sniff at that. Yes, I know what I've got to do. Dot is so experienced. Six wins in this competition. An absolutely remarkable achievement. Wonderful. Well done to her. Isn't that dog keen? Here we go. Straight out. All right, we've had a good run over it. They're allowed to go wherever they like. They don't have to do it in a neat fashion. Where do we go? Right, go back and have another look. Haven't found it yet. No, don't get that one. That's it. Interesting to see the different way they work. At this moment, Dot is now beginning to panic. Wait a minute, what are you doing? What are you doing? Get in there. No, it's not that one, and it's not that one. Go back over them all. The dog will find the scent. <laughs> it might bring the chairman into the ring. That would be amusing. Um, now, come on. Don't panic, little dog. Go and find the right one. 
It's easier if they go out and run along the pattern. He'll get there. He'll get there. Go the other way. Every time he comes back into the line, he's turning the wrong way. Take a long one. That's that one. Yes. Beautiful present. Whew. Dot says, my word, I was lucky. <laughs> Thought she was going to be led. <laughs> that grin says it all. <laughs> yes, good stuff. And that's the scent discrimination. You get deducted fractions of points for faults during the... There wouldn't have been any deductions on that because there is a time limit, but they didn't go anywhere near that. It doesn't. The dog doesn't have to do it immediately. It just has to do it right. And you saw both dogs do it perfectly. So that's scent discrimination. And there'll be a line-up now for them all for their own presentation, which is absolutely splendid. Uh, it obviously, it was a very good course that Stella Hendridge uh, set. There were 24 dogs taking part yesterday, only 19 bitches today. But the others worked very hard as well. Jackie Roddick, the ring steward, and Debbie Giddens, who has to write down all those faults, they all have to be there. Oh, the beach has got a nice little... A ni they've got the toy that they went for during the course of the event. And I don't know who's behind there. Now, what's that? It's very we interesting. Have a take proud of Ian Sanders, and we have a special guest with us here tonight as well. And I, I think I'm going to present that one first. I'll be presented. Um, this is a pre beginner's prize. Special pre beginner's. Dave Ray's even reading. He didn't know either. And so let's listen to him. And we're very, very lucky to have with us tonight the winner of that class, Maria Gibson with Daisy Dibble. So there they come. They didn't give the demonstration, but they are the winners of the pre-beginners class. And that, re I mean, beginners really, they, they do their exercises on the lead and so on. This is pre-beginners, so I don't know what they do. That may they get carried around the course, I don't know. But <laughs> obedience has a great number of devotees. When I first started doing crafts, I concentrated on obedience for the first eight years, and I used to love it. And I still find uh, a lot of fascination in it. You see dogs working really well. And it's a wonderful thing for the dogs themselves, particularly for the collies that need to work, and it's good work for them. But there are Daisy Dibble with her lab from the Kennel Club Good Citizen Dog Scheme. Well done. And so they're now all leaving the ring. But there go our two winners, Dot Watts and Susie Tooley. Well done to both of them. Dot goes back with yet another award to Wellingborough, and Susie takes hers back to Steffingley in Bedfordshire. That's the obedience competition.